God. Thank for your you. time. This is one of my favorite interviews ever. Wow. I really Don't have tell enjoyed me. it so much. I, the questions were so good. But I would love to come to Romania for sure. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely do it. It was such a pleasure to talk to you. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rox. Acest podcast începe cu sfârșitul. La fel ca arta manifestării. Exact ce ați auzit mai devreme mi-a spus regina manifestării la finalul primului interviu pe care l-a dat pentru publicul din România. Pregătește-te pentru o conversație autentică de o oră în care afli cum îți poate transforma arta manifestării viața, direct de la unul dintre cei mai bine vânduți autori de pe tot globul în ultimii doi ani. Salut, sunt Mihai Morar, bine ai venit la Fain și Simplu și în era manifestării. Invitata mea, Roxina Fusi, era o femeie obișnuită până în ianuarie anul trecut. Mama unui bebeluș, fost dependentă de cocaină. A scris cartea manifest și a devenit instant bestseller global. Așa cum am spus și în discuția cu Roxy, am descoperit cartea asta în vacanță în ianuarie anul trecut, iar prietenii de la editura Bookzon au tradus și tipărit ediția în română. Doar în România, manifest a reușit să vândă câteva zeci de mii de exemplare, ceea ce este foarte rar pentru o carte străină. Din prima zi, când am aflat despre carte și povestea lui Roxy, am manifestat momentul în care să pot să fac un podcast cu această femeie care au reușit să facă, din manifest, unul dintre cuvintele anului trecut și unul dintre cei mai căutați termeni pe Google global. Vă invit să ascultați această conversație despre care Roxy, la final, spune că a fost cel mai bun interviu pe care l-a dat vreodată. Nu mă mândresc cu asta, dar e o mândrie faptul că aproape în fiecare zi primesc mesaje pe Instagram de la voi, mulțumindu-mi că v-am făcut cunoștință cu această carte. E foarte autentică, Roxy, și o să vă dați seama de asta pe parcursul acestui interviu. Vorbește despre ce înseamnă să manifesti ceva corect, despre cum asta i-a schimbat viața și relațiile, a scos-o din zona dependenței de droguri, ce poți manifesta și ce nu poți manifesta și care e diferența față de The Secret. Vreau să mulțumesc echipei Bookzone, nu doar pentru că a facilitat acest interviu, dar mai ales pentru că l-au manifestat și ei cu aceeași intensitate ca mine. Și abia aștept să aducem împreună în România și următoarea carte a lui Roxy, despre care vorbesc în interviu. În podcastul de astăzi, Regina Manifestării te învață pas cu pas arta manifestării. Episodul acesta nu ți aduce ceea ce visezi, ceea ce manifesti peste noapte în viața ta, dar te va învăța cum să te recalibrezi pe ceea ce contează pentru tine, cum să-ți găsești energia ca să-ți recapeți focusul pentru drumul tău și numai al tău. De aceea, partenerul nostru pentru acest episod este Sneakers. Până la urmă, aceasta e și misiunea Sneakers. Reîmprospătează-te, reîncarcă-te. Când îți schimbi focusul intern și extern, îți schimbi starea. Schimbându-o starea, ajungi să îți schimbi viața. La fel cum, atunci când te așteaptă o zi grea, obositoare, nu te ajută cu nimic să te gândești ce zi grea ai în față. Pune focusul pe altceva. Începe ziua cu o tură de alergare sau mergi la sală. Focusul tău va fi pe asta. Elimini stresul, tonusul tău va crește, iar după ce ai făcut ce e mai greu la început, restul zilei ți, va, ți se va părea mai ușor. Ține doar de tine pe ce îți muți atenția. Așa că ia un sneakers, e timpul să-ți recapeți energia. Urmează un episod care îți face bine. Roxy, uh, I just want to tell you that uh, this moment we are living is a true result of... Uh manifestation. I want to tell you a story. It was last year, uh, I think uh, January 6. I was in uh, Barcelona with my family on holiday. And one morning, it was very early in, in the morning, I, I left my family to sleep in the hotel room. I went to a specialty coffee shop and on my way, I, I bought the weekend edition of uh, Financial Times. I read an article about an orange book presented as a, a as a future phenomenon by an unknown uh, author i search you on uh, on google and in the same day i call in romania uh, my friend the the manager of uh, books on publishing house and i tell tell him that we should bring this book in uh, in romania so almost two years and two books later 
we are here together doing a podcast in Romania. Thank um, you so much. <laughs> These are the Romanian Honestly. editions of uh, of Manifest. Oh, that is the best best story, and it feels so amazing to actually hear it from you. So it was so funny because I didn't, I don't think I realized this for ages that, but I could see I was getting tagged a lot in posts from Romania, mm-hmm. and I was felt so proud. And uh, and then I read it was you. You bought the book to Romania, <laughs> so thank you so much. Uh, I didn't buy the the book. I'm just a radio and the podcast guy, uh, but I have friends in, in publishing houses, so books on was. You got the word there, so <laughs> yeah. thank you. Um, I, I'm very grateful for um, for being here, but I want to ask you: How did this bestseller uh, manifest change your life, Roxy? Oh, how did the book change my life? I mean, you know, I think interestingly, the book only came out in January 2022, but it feels like it's been around for so much mm-hmm. longer because it, it's kind of reach and success, I would say, was greater than I ever imagined. And I think it really showed how in need we are as a society and culture globally of help um, and of something to help guide us to a better future and a better version of ourselves. But you are a better version of uh, of yourself now than two years uh, ago. I mean, I would say, you know, I mean, if, I, if we went back, let's say five years, mm-hmm. so if we went back to, to when I first ever discovered manifestation, I was 28. It was May 2018. I had no job, no money, no confidence. Uh, I was an addict. I'd been addicted to cocaine and alcohol for 10 years. I had never, ever known happiness. And when I discovered manifestation, I would say relatively quickly, everything changed. My whole life began to transform. And... For me, this really is a self-development practice. Mm -hmm. And it's a journey of self-discovery, of self-empowerment, of self-belief, and making your dreams a reality. But because it's a journey of self-discovery and it is this self-development practice, it means that it's always evolving. So who I was two years ago when the book came out is so different to who I was a year after that. And it's so different to who Mm -hmm. I was six months ago. In fact, even over the summer, I feel like, wow, God, I've gone through a big growing, you know, a big growth spurt. So you're always growing and evolving. But every time you commit to learning about yourself, healing your wounds, going into, you know, into the practices of manifestation, you become a more confident and abundant version of yourself. Uh, in the first book, the, the Orange Book, uh, Seven Steps to Living Your Best Life, Um, you are talking about these seven step, steps of manif- manifestation, but regarding your story, mm. which was the most important step for you? Good question. So I think the most important step for me, and I would argue for most people, is remove fear and doubt, step two. Because the secret of manifesting is that we only manifest what we subconsciously believe we are worthy of receiving. So we have to believe we're worthy of love, of happiness, of joy and abundance to be able to actually attract it mm-hmm. into our lives. But for most of us, we grow up believing that we are not enough as we are, that actually we need to be different to be loved or to be liked. And those insecurities build up over years and decades until adulthood when we really struggle to be unapologetically ourselves and we are struggle with the inner critic, with that voice. And so this journey of removing fear and doubt and, and you know, unblocking, you know, our path to success is the most profound and important journey of the whole manifestation process, but I believe of any journey that we go on in life. But is every step of these seven uh, steps mandatory? Yes. Yes, you can't skip a step. <laughs> so, you know, you can't, let's say, 
work on yourself, but then not align your behavior mm-hmm. by taking action towards your goal. You can't do all of that, but still really feel envious of all the people around you and be in that scarcity mm-hmm. mindset where there's not enough to go around. So every step is absolutely mandatory. <laughs> Uh, in, in my summer vac- uh, vacation this year, I, I listened to uh, your podcast with Jay Shetty, mm-hmm. a milestone for you. Absolutely. Uh, you, you said that visualization is not manifestation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is n- not the only one misconception about uh, manifestation. What's the difference? Uh, why is manifestation much more than visualization? Yeah, great question. So visualization is a practice. It's a ritual that you do. So you might think into a visualization meditation for 10 minutes a day. If anyone that's listening that doesn't mm-hmm. know, it's simply where you're just visualizing your future self or a goal you want to achieve. And you're really immersing yourself in the feeling of having it. You're embodying your future. And in that space, when you start to embody your future, you begin that manifesting process. You begin energetically to attract that into your life. You prime your subconscious by letting it know what you want, where you're headed, and it starts to prime itself to reach that goal. But it doesn't end there. Because if we just lay on our beds and did our visualization and then carried on as we were, nothing would happen. And we'd say, oh, it doesn't work. But manifesting is actually about doing the visualization as the first step which is is in mine it's step one be carrying your vision but then you have to do the work you have to take action you have to actually be proactive in it so visualization is a part of the manifesting process but manifestation really is actually a way of living it's a it's a, pra- a life guide and uh One another misconception mis- about uh, manifestation that you observed around uh, you? Yeah, I think people think that it's, you know, magic or that it's woo. The secret. Or, yeah, or, yeah, they think it's about, they think it's about material possession, you know, that it's just greed almost, that mm-hmm. it's just about you know, that it doesn't have much substance to it or that it's just for young people, you know, Gen Z. Mm -hmm. There's lots of misconceptions like that. And so, uh, it's and because of that, there are a lot of skeptics, you know, who say, oh, there's no way. But actually, that's not what manifesting is at all. You know, it's not wishful thinking. It's not woo. It's not any of these things. It's actually really uh, based in, you know, philosophy, wisdom, you know, quantum physics, Uh, you know, it's, it's it's such a rich and meaningful practice. It's been around for centuries. But uh, have you read or have you seen the movie The Secret? Because everybody uh, is uh, talking about uh, your book, your books mm. that manifest is the secret of Gen Z. Yeah. Um, I have read The Secret, and I think that there are many great things about it because it really introduced people to the idea of positive thinking when at the time that was very you know wasn't spoken about it wasn't in the kind of mainstream and so I think it, for a lot of people that really was life-changing for them I think that times have changed so much since that book was written and I think that if you watch the movie it very much is about these kind of like material things mm-hmm. it's about manifesting a car or money um but it doesn't doesn't go much further than that it's not as focused on the healing journey but i also think that to give it credit at the time when it came out if they had gone deep into healing and meditation people wouldn't have listened because they weren't ready to hear about that kind of mm-hmm. thing then so uh it's it's much more than the secret Uh, to, to manifest and uh, I hope that many people that are listening uh, to us right now already have uh, read the, the two books but I want to ask you uh, you talk very much about uh, your how you overcome your own addiction the cocaine addiction we are living in Romania especially in a pandemic of drug uh, consuming. Um, you need much more than 
manifestation to overcome uh, an addiction, no? Yeah, look, the journey of recovery from addiction is very different for everybody. And for me, you know, for me, I found what, what helped me in the end was that I found a purpose. I found a reason to want to wake up in the morning, a reason to want to feel good. I, I created a life that was better for me than taking drugs, whereas before I had no purpose, no motivation, no self-worth. The only escape I had was taking drugs. And so that for me, I think, was what really changed it in the end. But for other people, you know, and I had gone to NA meetings in the years before, but things like NA or AA, you know, are incredible. You know, the 12-step program is amazing. Getting professional help. I think that, like I said, there's lots of different ways for people to recover. But um, I think the first step is really, especially when you're in a culture where lots of people are, are using drugs, is recognizing when you have a problem. Because I know for me, for, you know, years, I would say, you know, I, I have a problem and my friends would say, no, you're not that bad or you're not as bad as so-and-so or no, you're just having fun. So, you know, the first step is even just recognizing and admitting this has control over me. But uh, many people are saying that you, you heal in connection, only in connection with yourself and in a relationship mm -hmm. or in a social true uh, relation. Um, how, how did you heal yourself? Is connection an, an important part of overcoming the drug problems? Yeah, I think so. I think having a support system is very important. Um, but actually, you know, funnily enough, when I first gave up and I first discovered manifesting and I went on the healing journey, I remember actually being very lonely. Uh, I didn't have any friends left. I had never made friends sober. Hmm. All my friends took drugs. I had a new partner who I didn't, I was having a baby with, but I didn't really know him that well. We'd only been together three months. So <laughs> I was getting to know him. I was pregnant. I was giving it, you know, so I actually remember it being very lonely, but I had a connection to another version of myself. I knew who I wanted to become. And that was driving me forward. So manifestation is very important also in, in this problem because you connect yeah. with your higher self, you, with, with exactly. your better self. Exactly. It's, it's you. And the first step you visualize, everybody has a version of themselves that exists in their mind that is better, that is more confident that is happier, that is more content. We can all sit down and visualize the best version of ourselves that exists. And then you start to think, how can I become that person? How can I actually embody them? What healing do I need to do? What habits do I need to commit to? How should I treat myself day to day to reach that person? But <clears throat> speaking about addition, addictions, can, you, can your work, your job become an addiction? How do you keep, because you, you had uh, the last two years uh, to, to overcome also this global fame. How yeah. do you keep this balance between fame and normality? Mm. What's your I reality think, check? I think um, I definitely would say that I became addicted to my work mm -hmm. for sure. Um, I think that I had no confidence for all my life and then suddenly I found something I was good at. I was good at helping other people and that felt really good. Mm -hmm. And then I became obsessed with it because I felt that that made me, that finally gave me a sense of worth. So I stopped, I didn't socialize, I didn't do anything. I just worked and was a mum, and that was it. And which is honestly the reality for a lot of people. But I definitely found my validation from work and I worked myself to a point where actually by January this year, when I released the second book, I was not well. I was having panic attacks. Mm -hmm. I was incredibly bad anxiety again. I felt really mentally not okay. 
And I knew then I thought I have to find some kind of balance. And so over the next six months really was this focus on, I started some trauma therapy to deal with things from my past. I worked, started working with functional medicine doctors, hormone doctors, taking the right supplements, introducing more meditation practices, um, and setting more boundaries and actually finding joy outside of work, socializing again, being more present, mm -hmm. and then finding that balance. And now I feel, you know, relatively there. But you, you are not a, a socialite. Uh, you have a social life, but you are not every day in, in the city, at the restaurants. No. Uh, no. If you can remember 10 years ago, How was Roxy Nafusi and how is now? What, what What is a true social life? Oh my God. And, Then and a mean, healthy one. Oh, a healthy one. I mean, 10 years ago, I was, you know, at every single party out three, four, five times a night, but would carry on partying to the next day after parties. In London. Strangers, in London, at strangers' houses. I wouldn't sleep for days. It was awful. I mean, it was, It was just, it was just awful. And now my social life is I have dinner at 6 p.m. with a friend and I'm done by 7.30. Wow. And, you know, I love it. And they, honestly, some of my friends, especially if they still go out, they're like, I love seeing you because I know I'm not going to get drunk. <laughs> um, you know, or I go for, I have friends come for tea or I go for a walk or I go to the gym or, you know, and that for me is just, pleasant and lovely and I wore you know spending time with my family um and I find joy in those simple pleasures rather than those very hedonistic highs but do you have any regrets regarding when you think about those uh, years no I mean I don't regret anything because I think everything brought me to where I am but when I look back I definitely shudder and feel sometimes physically mm -hmm. sick when I think about it because I'm like oh god horrible you know some of those and they're kind of lots of mini traumas really those nights where you can't sleep you're taking too many drugs you're staring at the walls it's oh it's horrible and I think god it, it, it gives you a feeling of disgust but I wouldn't say it, but I don't judge myself for it because I was mm -hmm. in pain and that was the only way I knew how to escape or feel better. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm glad I'm on the other side. <laughs> wow. Another person. But do you think that people have the power to change profoundly? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, without a doubt. And I think that we must all recognize that we do have the power to change who we are. There's that saying, um, a leopard never changes its spots. And I think that I heard that a lot growing up. And it was really this idea that we are fixed as people. And that's what I believed. I thought I was just depressed and an addict and I'd always be like that. But, you know, not only have I changed, I've seen many people around me change, evolve, grow. And I think we need to give our, ourselves permission to do that, but also give the people around us permission to do that. But do you, know? do, do you remember the most toxic relationship you, you had? I think the most toxic relationship I had was with myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it was, I'm just, I was horrible to my, I mean. You don't blame that? society, you don't blame the others, you, you blame you, yourself. I think, you know, blame keeps you stuck in the mm -hmm. victim mentality. And I think it keeps you in this low vibration. And, you know, life happens to all of us. And we all have our own circumstances that can keep us stuck or make things hard or challenging. But in the end, you know, I was keeping myself there for so long. I was treating myself poorly. I was speaking to myself like I would never dream of speaking to anyone else. And I was abusing myself. Hmm. So, you know, what's more toxic than that? Uh, I think that in the, in the second book, uh, 
dive uh, manifest dive deeper uh, you you wrote that I know that to live the best life we can we need to look back and heal our inner child yeah tell me Roxy which is the most important emotion that we should feel towards our inner child I think compassion you know compassion and mm-hmm. unconditional love because you know in children you know and they need to feel heard seen validated and safe you know and I think if I look back and I'm sure if anyone listening or you you know when you look back you're in a child can you really say you felt that way you know probably probably not because our parents didn't learn how to offer that to us because they didn't weren't taught you know brought up like that and that inner child who is so wounded and starts to believe very very early on um that they are not enough you know then starts to find confirmation of that belief as they mm-hmm. go through life and keep building it so if we can go back to that root cause to the root to to the first time or the first time we came to believe that we weren't enough and we can go back to our inner child who still lives within all of us and say you know give that child validation a feeling of safety allow them to be seen and heard and loved it really is powerful and i i definitely was a bit uh, skeptical about inner child work before i thought you know why do i need to go back like what's going back going to help me do going forward mm-hmm. and then i realized it's inescapable our past is with us all the time and we must address it and heal it and work through it and uh When we do, you know, magic happens. Uh, I just love your concept of uh, reparenting. Our yeah. capacity of uh, being our own parents. How much is yeah. in reparenting? How much is repair? And how much is parenting? Oh, good question. I think, but I mean, I think it's relative. I think it's both. I think, but then I, I think with repair, it's like we can't, we can't, necessarily fix the things mm-hmm. that have happened right because they've happened to us there those wounds are there um we're not going to we can't make it go away we can't pretend it never happened but what we can do is give ourselves what we needed at the time mm-hmm. and then actually and start to do that to our adult selves as well so giving making ourselves now even feel loved and heard and seen and all those things beautiful just beautiful but we live in a society we are a generation that we are not used to repair we are much more um, used to to throw away everything this mm. is the consumerism uh, we need to to learn to repair mm. things people relationships mm. Yeah, I think that's actually a very good question. I think it's uh, definitely true in relationships because I think it's very easy, especially if we let's let's focus on relationships here. Let's say that, you know, on social media we're always seeing perfect relationships, happy couples, mm-hmm. you know, we kind of have this false idea and fantasy that that's what relationships are. And I think that's a fantasy that we have much more in this generation than our parents' generation. Our parents' generation knew relationships are hard you work through them you commit it's ups and downs our generation is like oh my god if it's bad forget it it's over you know it's not worth it and actually i would say that one of the best things and ways that i've grown within my relationship with wade is that i used to be like that i used to be a bit like oh well, if we're having a fight it's it's that means it's over like it's not good mm-hmm. whereas now I'm able to say okay, how can we communicate how can we work through this and understand each other better and use it to make us stronger speaking of uh, of Wade uh, I, I learned from you this uh, this concept of co-parenting yeah uh, okay short uh, long story short uh, y- you claim first that uh, manifestation brought Wade into your life after you have listened a podcast about manifestation. Yeah. If it's true. Uh exactly one year later, Wolf, your son, 
uh, was born. Yeah. Uh, and you show your your gratitude uh, for your relationship with your uh, father of uh, with the father of your child every time. Mm. But how did mm. the relationship with him end shortly after you you launch your book? And how how can you uh, repair the relationship to co-parent together? Yeah, you know I'm very lucky that Wade is. Uh, also very invested in self-development in um he's very emotionally aware he's very kind um and you know like i said we hadn't known each other very long when 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 i was found out i was pregnant our lives were very different suddenly also i found this new purpose and it you know it was a very it was a very difficult time very transitional mm-hmm. we felt at that time, you know what, maybe we are better off as co-parents, like who's to say that we have to be together because we have a child together. So we decided to co-parent and stay friends. And actually in that three years, we were, or two two and a half years, we were co-parenting. We were both on our own healing journeys and it was beautiful. And I am so grateful to Wade because I would never have the career I have. I wouldn't be the person I am without him. He was, he has been such an incredible support mm-hmm. and um, has taught me so much. Um, and then, you know, now we're very strong again and it's beautiful. Oh, so th- this is a good news. You, you are together again. Yeah, you, re- yeah. you just repaired your uh, relationship. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> wow. Nice. But yeah. it, it takes a lot of work. It takes uh, yeah. uh, no, uh, I don't, no ego yeah, or less absolutely. ego. Mm, absolutely. And, uh, and taking responsibility for your own actions and triggers and behaviors and insecurities and being really willing to work with someone through theirs. Um, yeah. And I think there is one more important thing. Uh, you know, in, in Romania, but I think also in the rest of the world, uh, your readers are women. Mm. I don't A lot know, of, maybe yeah. 75%. Of the readers yeah, of yeah. manifest are are uh, mm-hmm. are women, um, and it's important when you told you told me when when you heal, also your partner mm-hmm. was on his journey on his yeah. journey. Uh, it is a real struggle for many women mm-hmm. to to take on this journey uh, the. the the men, the partners. Mm. Do you think that the men are not ready for this uh, healing journey? Journey. I think that they're ready. I think that perhaps they're just not as open to it. And I think that that is just so cultural. I think mm-hmm. that, you know, they don't want to be maybe stigmatized or made fun of or... You know, it may feel, they may have a misconception that to be invested in self-development is emasculating mm-hmm. or, you know, isn't part of the traditional masculine norms. But, you know, I obviously don't think this is true at all. And I really, really hope that more men will read this. And I think that, you know, personally, I think the Orange Book is perfect for men because it's not too, um, it's very practical, mm-hmm. it's very expensive. There's nothing, you know, spiritual within it. That, so I think for somebody, for for a man, I think it's actually a great starting point. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's get back to to manifestation. And uh, I wonder if we should uh, manifest with carefulness. What are the traps people could fall into if they are manifesting without limits? 
What do you mean? I want a car. I want a new home. Uh, I want possessions. Uh, I want the perfect relationship uh, and the perfect woman. So I think it's really important for people to understand why they want to manifest something. So, you know, you might get people who want to manifest something like just a material possession, a bag, you know, like you say, Mm -hmm. a car, whatever it is. But then you have to say to yourself, why? Why do you want a designer bag? Is it because you want to be seen by other people to be something so that they like you more? Because that really isn't coming from this like strong intention and feeling of purpose or this is going to bring me real fulfillment and joy and peace. That's coming from this will bring me status. And this might break, make more people like me. And that's the intention there is very different. So really, when we're thinking about what we want to manifest, we should be manifesting with intention. And the intention is to actually bring a life that brings us true fulfillment. And arguably, a bag or some material possession are not going to bring you that fulfillment. However, let's say you want your dream home, That I can understand, of course, because that gives you a safe space, mm-hmm. a space to be with your family, a sanctuary, you know, and make sure and, and know that, be aligned with that when you're manifesting. Is any possession or, I don't know, material thing you are manifesting uh, right now? Me? No. I don't think I've <laughs> ever, I don't think I've ever put anything material on I've had goals and actually I did put how much money I wanted to earn in 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 my vision board. Um, and I put things like any particular jobs I wanted to get or how many, like I wanted to grow my team by how many people, mm-hmm. things like that, or a particular place I really wanted to visit, but never anything like car or no thing. What's on your vision board right now, Roxy? Well, I'm actually in a bit of a place. I, I know, a workshop in Romania for sure. Oh, obviously, <laughs> of course, that's number one. Um, I'm, I feel I'm in a place now where I don't really know what I want to manifest next. And I'm actually feeling a Whoa. bit... Um, yeah, it's the first step. And I'm going to say, because, you know, things happen very quickly. And then I was finding balance. And that was on my vision board at the beginning of this year. I put that I wanted to have a better work-life balance. So I feel like I've done that. Um, but I don't feel in particular like I have really specific goals that I want. I think I'm just enjoying life as it is. And I've never felt this happy. So I'm trying to make the most of it and really cherish it and be in the now. But- and when I have a goal that will come to me. It isn't this uh, a comfort zone you are right now? I don't know, but I think it's still very new. Uh-huh. It's still new to me, but I do want to think of like what's next. I just have to. Some, and a lot of people listening will have this, by the way, where they, they get asked it a lot. It's like, I don't know what I want. And so I say, okay, don't try and figure it out too much yet. Actually, how can you make the life you currently have feel as good as possible? Think into gratitude, you know, focus on feeling your best day to day, getting, you know, those those self-help development practices um, going. And then you'll know inspiration will come to you and you think, that's what I want. I think this is perfect. No, no desires on your vision board. Not yet. <laughs> nice. Let's speak a, a little bit about this notion of perfection. Mm-hmm. Uh, perfection doesn't exist. Uh, mm-hmm. Many people said that perfection is toxic also. Is it healthy mm-hmm. to create our own definition for the word perf- per- uh, perfection? No, I think you're right. I mean, I, I don't think perfect, perfect is healthy at all because it essentially makes us believe that anything else isn't good enough. And so I think that can be, you know, very toxic. And actually when people are, let's say, perfectionist, you know, we use that term a lot. People use it almost like a compliment to themselves Mm -hmm. or like, you know, oh, I'm just a perfectionist. Actually, perfectionists are self-sabotaging. They're holding themselves back constantly because they're never able to just let go until it's perfect. 
And of course, that never that doesn't exist. Perfect doesn't exist. So actually, it's this balance of striving to be your best and to do your best, but also giving yourself room to be human. But you you can say this is a perfect day. You can. I mean, you can use the phrase. How is a perfect? I say it all the time. I say it all the time. I'm like, <laughs> oh my god, perfect, or mm-hmm. I love it. But I use it as a like as an expression of true joy and happiness. But I don't mean it so literally that this is this is perfection and nothing else. Everything else would never match up to this. But can you describe a, a perfect day for for Roxy Nafusi? Um, oh, honestly, it would be waking up, having my morning coffee, the sun shining, going to exercise. I love it. Mm-hmm. Going for a nice lunch with my son and Wade. Um, seeing some friends, maybe sitting on the sofa, watching my favorite TV show, eating banana bread, and having an early night. Honestly, that's my perfect day. <laughs> So your home is the is the perfection. Yeah, and, and my family are mm-hmm. my home. Nice. So being with them. You, your boy is adorable. Thank you. You are you are really blessed. Thank uh, you. He's so sweet. <laughs> I have also kids. I have uh, uh, I'm the father of three girls. Oh my gosh, three. Yeah. Amazing. How old are they? Uh 14 years. Uh, the twins and one yeah. little four year old girl. Oh, oh so sweet. Wow, that's nice that twins. Do they get along? Um sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> They are very different. Uh so nice. can, can we teach our our uh, children to to manifest? And from what age? Definitely. So I just wrote a book called Manifest for Kids uh. which comes out actually next Thursday. Um and for me manifesting for kids and I split the book into four steps because remember that manifesting is a self-development practice. It's really about being the best version of yourself that exists. It's not just about attracting things into your life. So I split it for kids into understanding emotions and so this is helping children with mm-hmm how to kind of process and uh express and let go of those trickier emotions like worry, anger, fear, sadness, mm-hmm. guilt, embarrassment. And I give them toolboxes of how to do that using teaching them affirmations, meditation, breath work, journaling. You know, and these are practices you, the earlier you learn them the better. Um the second step is self-belief and confidence. Mm-hmm. This is where I'm really encouraging children to to appreciate their uniqueness. how special they are recognize um you know all the little things they do day to day that they can feel proud of understanding how not to compare themselves to others on social media the third step is gratitude i think that you can you can learn to develop a positive mindset mm-hmm. we know that you actually can i definitely did this for myself i've been doing it for wolfy since he since he could communicate every night before bed i say to him What's the best thing that happened today? And then he tells me and I say, what's another thing? What's another thing? And I keep getting him to mm-hmm. remember good moments in the day. And I can see the impact it's had on Wolfie because he is so positive. He's always saying, "Oh, mommy, this is the coolest. This <laughs> is amazing. This is the best. Oh, I love it." Isn't that great? He saw a picture of himself yesterday. He said, "That's beautiful." <laughs> you know, he like, really has developed a positive mindset from this simple practice. And so I give kids lots of different practices that they can do. That's one of them in the book as well. Um and ones that you can do as a family. Um and then the fourth step is goal setting and this is more like the manifesting part of it, I suppose, traditional manifesting. So I teach them how to do visualization meditations, make a vision board, mm-hmm. um how to persist through challenges, believe in themselves, um and make little action plans to help them actually reach their goals. Nice. So there is no limit of age? No, you I can think do it with your uh, babies? 
I think that once they can start to communicate, you can start helping them with things like knowing how to understand what they're feeling. So mm -hmm. it's under, helping them to identify if they're feeling angry or sad mm -hmm. or you know embarrassed or whatever it is. You can help them understand little ways to breathe through those emotions. Mm -hmm. Nice. You know, as early as absolutely with your four-year-old and she's feeling angry, teaching her. Oh, sorry. Is it, is it, yeah, girl, you is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> teaching her how to breathe, how to breathe through it. You know, it's, it's such an easy practice to start with. Um, the goal setting, of course, is is a little bit older. You're not going to be doing it with your four-year-old, but even from the age of six or seven, you can start teaching mm -hmm. them and work through through it with them. You you are talking about this uh, you, about your boy, and uh, he is very positive because mm -hmm. you learned him with uh, positive affirmations. Uh, what are the affirmations you start your day with? Every morning, uh, oh, I change them, but my favorites mm -hmm. for the day for the morning is I'm so excited for the day ahead. I am open to all um, all opportunities. I am ready to receive abundance. I am enough. I deserve success. And how, when uh, these affirmations, this positivity turns in toxic positivity? You talk uh, very much about negativity yeah. and positivity and the toxic of uh, Yeah. So toxic positivity, I think, is this when you expect to feel good all the time. It's this thought feeling that, oh my gosh, I have to be happy all the time. I always must have a positive mindset. And any time I don't, I'm ruining my manifesting process or I'm not doing it right. And that for me is toxic positivity because we are human. And that means that we are always going to go through a range of emotions, weekly or even daily for some people, mm -hmm. you know. And that's normal. And that's actually being able to navigate those emotions, have compassion for ourselves throughout those times. Um, and no, and I always say this really for me is positivity. Positivity and optimism is knowing that even through the darker times, better days are coming. And when you manifest negativity, this is not manifestation. Well, some things that are just unfair happen in life and we have no control over them and I do say there are things in life we cannot control but the things that we can we should having said that I definitely feel for me personally and I don't know if other people will, like, will think the same I know that if I am in a bad mood I'm angry I'm resentful I'm envious I'm feeling shit whatever it is I don't attract any abundance into my life on those days. I get, I'll have an email with rejection. <laughs> I'll, you know, get a bill come through the door that I don't <laughs> want. Like bad things happen on those days. So, you know, I do think our vibration does matter, but it's knowing how to pull yourself out of it. You know, one thing I'm very good at is bouncing back. So it's not that I never feel bad. God, I, I have days absolutely where I'm anxious, down, fed up, frustrated, mm -hmm. but I know how to bounce back. Nice. Nice words. Uh, you you, tell, you told me that you go to therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I wonder uh, if your therapist uh, has read the, the, the manifest books. <laughs> well... And what's the position no. of, of the, the therapist towards... Uh, The, the manifest book um no so i i had therapy for a uh, sort of it was like a three-month period and then mm -hmm. i i don't have a therapist now so i have a different relationship with her some people have a therapist who they have for like 10 years or five years yeah and that works for them for me i don't i find that i like having different therapists for different periods of my life because i feel that every therapist teaches you something different you get something else out of it so i've had therapist for a time to feel like I reach a natural end. I feel like I've really worked through a particular thing. And then I find a different therapist who has a different approach and helps me with something else. Um, but I haven't ever come across one that's read the book yet. 
because I many uh, I know many therapists in uh, in Romania. Uh, I had many therapists coming uh, here in the podcast studio that uh, read the book. Oh really? Yeah, it's very popular. Oh, that's lovely. I like. Did, did they like it? <laughs> because is is written by a, a self-taught woman. Mm. Is um, very sincere mm. uh, and is written in the words of the average people, everybody. I think you can read this, and uh, after uh, after these books, you can go to therapy. You can yeah, take yeah. the next step. One hundred percent, and I think it's such a good thing to do. Well, do them both, but this is like mm-hmm. the introduction, especially for yeah. people that have never done anything like this before. They don't know about self development. This is it's a great introduction into it. Roxy, I I spoke uh, with uh, my friends from the books on publishing uh, publishing house in Romania, and we are yeah. curious and uh, in, impatient to find out what's the next after the <laughs> manifest era. Do you know what? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I love writing books. I really love writing books. Uh, I think it's it's a way I like to articulate myself and express myself. I don't know what's next. I think you know I'm done with the manifest trilogy now. I've done three. It's officially a trilogy. It's done. I've got manifest, dive deeper, mm-hmm. kids. We're done. We're done with manifest. <laughs> so I don't know what's next. If anyone has any any ideas, do send me a, <laughs> a DM. <laughs> I'm here for inspiration. Um, So I don't know what's next. I'm going to take one year off writing because it's mm-hmm. it's extremely challenging. Um, so 2024, I won't write. 2025, I'll probably write another book. But you don't know I, yet. I don't know yet what. But do you have this? I, I don't speak about the writer's block. Do you have this fear of after this huge success? Uh, to 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 write another book, or do, do you are confident? No, I'm confident. <laughs> I love writing, and I think whatever I do, I'll do something different so that it really it it people really have something completely new. Um, and not every book has to be a global success, you know. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> I already got the global success. I'm fine. <laughs> We're just writing a book that maybe does well, but you know, hopefully they all do well. Uh, whatever's meant to be will be. I like your relationship with success. You are oh, not. Thank you. you are not addicted to this. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. No, I'm not really because I think um, it doesn't really make you happy, you know. And I think I really do know that. It's what would it mean to me now if I had. What difference would it really make to my life if I had another bestseller or more money or more recognition? I don't think my life is great as it is. I don't think mm-hmm. it's not going to add to that. It's just will be more of the same. Like I love my life how it is, and I, as long as I keep evolving and keeping my mind challenged and inspired. You know that's that's more important to me. But is any, I don't know, condition or difficult thing that you have not yet managed to overcome, even if you are the queen of manifestation? I mean, I'm still working on some of my insecurities mm-hmm. that I still struggle with. Like, yeah, there's still things within myself that I, I still. I'm trying to find confidence in, um, yeah. But I am. But I'm getting there, you know. Like, and I'm getting there. And I still, you know, I still get. I told you I was feeling low vibe a few weeks ago, and mm-hmm. got some, got quite a few rejections, which hadn't happened for a long time, you know. And I was like, oh, but it's fine. Like, it was also like I, for me, it's step four. I become test of the universe. I was like, okay, how do I use that to help help me grow? Mm-hmm. You you told me about uh, those years of 
I don't idea of happiness uh, when you were an addict, uh, a socialite. Uh, what's the idea of happiness now for for Roxy? I think happiness is just feeling present and content and being able to just, you know, enjoy life, go through it. I think it's not even, I don't even really know, like what even is happiness? It's just feeling good. And I think you can get like obsessed, well, I felt like I could get a bit obsessed with like, am I happy? But is this what happiness is? Because life still has ups and downs. And then I'm like, no, that's life. Life isn't like, you don't just reach this time where you're just happy every day forever, but you can reach a point where you generally feel grateful for your life through all of it. And just feel, it's just a feeling in your heart that you're like, I'm not bouncing off the walls like, oh my God, this is the best day ever. But I just feel, I know I'm happy. You should be because you, you change the world, Roxy. Everybody, <laughs> I, I think the manifest is the word of the year, of the last year, of this year. Everybody yeah. is manifesting right now. I don't know if they are doing right or wrong, but everybody is manifesting, not uh, putting res resolutions anymore. Yeah. And I think it's healthier. Yeah. You made I this world a little bit healthier. Oh, well, thank you so much. That's so, so kind of you. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for um Oh my God, thank for your you. Time. This is one of my favorite interviews ever. Wow. I really Don't tell enjoyed me. it so much. I The questions were so good. I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much. Uh, but I want to tell you uh, that what I'm manifesting right now. Tell me. Uh, the first trip of Rox in Afos in Romania. Yeah. Uh, I that. You know that uh, we, I have a podcast. Fine, she simple is like nice yeah. and easy in uh, yeah. in English. Uh, we have a, a series of events. Yeah. Uh, and I dream of um, I'm manifesting a workshop with Rox in Afosi. In Romania. Amazing. Well, let's definitely make it happen. I would love that. We speak with our uh, friends from Bookzone. We should do it. Yeah. Because you, you have uh, you have so many readers here in uh, in Romania. Well, thank you so much. I would love to come to Romania for sure. We'll 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 definitely do it. It was such a pleasure to talk to you. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Roxy. Thank you. Thanks everybody else as well. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.